Hello and welcome back. Today's video is all about an active powered stage monitor, which is by The Box, and it's called the MA8 Stroke 2. I'm going to be exploring this active monitor and I'm going to consider whether it's any good or not. And I'm going to take into account, do they cost very much? Are there any weaknesses in the design? Uh, well, yes. And the likelihood is high of yours going the same way. But stick around and I will share my experiences of using the monitor, which I've had for over seven or eight years, and also how I attempted to repair the unit and was I successful or not. So keep watching, like and subscribe. This is Everything Guitar. So this is the box MA 8 stroke 2 CL active floor monitor. You can buy them from Toman in Germany. I've included chapters in the description below so you can skip to whichever section you like. So if you're interested in the repair that I attempted or you just want to find out about the specifications, you can just skip ahead. So this is an active monitor. Its power is 70 watts, equipped with an 8 inch speaker and a tweeter. The frequency range is 80 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The only control you've got on the back is a volume control, no EQ. You've got an XLR stroke TRS input and you've got a monitor XLR out so you can chain these up. It's a floor monitor so it works like a standard wedge, you have it on the floor and if you're singing or standing up, it's pretty good to aim at you. But if you're a drummer, you might want to put this on a raised chair or a box or something. Dimensions, width 285 millimeters, depth 325 millimeters, height 275 millimeters, weight 7.5 kilograms, and they're very light. You can buy a protective cover for it from Toman, but it's rather thin. It comes with a three year warranty. The cost of this as of very early 2022, in British pounds anyway, is 122 pounds, which includes tax. Here's the positives. The 70 watt output is loud enough for most stage uses. If you're playing with a drummer, you can still hear these monitors. Definitely a lot of clarity when it comes to guitars and vocals going through these monitors. Good connectivity with the combi jack and XLR. And the slanted cab is fine for floor and standing use. Okay, so in the negatives. Well, there's no EQ, but you get what you pay for. So there's only a volume pot. Now, unfortunately, the volume pot sticks out and it is rather vulnerable. And you can imagine that when you've got this monitor in a small stage area, you may be quite close to where people are standing or walking past. So where that volume sticks out of the back of this monitor, it definitely makes it vulnerable. And that's what happened to mine. Someone's obviously kicked it and it's got damaged. There may be ways of protecting it a little more and I might explore that in the future. You will need a five kilo ohm dual ganged potentiometer with three lugs and it must be linear. A soldering iron, preferably a temperature controlled soldering iron, some solder, a set of wire cutters, preferably small, some silicon rubber, some multi-strand wires, a small but heavy weight, some foam, a selection of crosshead screwdrivers, large and small, a quarter inch spanner that's hex nut capable. You will need to be able to identify capacitors, potentiometers, and have some soldering experience. Do not carry out this repair unless you are confident that you can avoid 
touching the capacitors, be very careful at all times. So now onto the repair that I attempted. Now the volume pot had sheared right off, so you couldn't really adjust the volume. So it's a dual ganged volume pot that you need if you want to attempt this repair. Then I thought, well, if I can put something similar in, at least worst case scenario, I could wire it to the connections that already exist. So I needed to open the backup and have a look. And this is how you open the backup. There's various screws at the back of the unit. So I took the back off the unit. So there's a number of screws at the back. And you do have to take all of the screws that you can see off. And there are two little screws as well, which is round about the toggle switch, the auto power mode function. There's two little black crosshead screws either side of that little toggle. But the rest, you just take all of the other crosshead screws out. They're the larger silver crosshead screws. And you can prise the unit out. Obviously, you have to take care not to touch any capacitors, but you can prise that unit out. And then you'll see a circuit board that looks like it's kind of glued to the back of the unit. I prized it away with my thumb. And you just slice around the unit, being very careful not to touch those capacitors. And then you can release the PCB circuit board, and then you can get to where the pot is sitting. Now you have to obviously release that pot from the outside on the back, so you have to undo that little hex nut that holds it. Now you've got the circuit board out, you can see that the volume pot is just sitting on the PCB. I started with the aim of leaving the chassis of the old volume pot in place, and that would give me something to solder to in order to create what is obviously an earth, because it was connected to the bottom of the volume pot. So therefore the pot, that's the grounding. Now the three lugs, you can see because it's a dual ganged pot, there are two sets of three lugs that come off the potentiometer. And so I thought, well, if I leave the old right angled connectors that were already soldered into the PCB, then all I would have to do is to solder onto those lugs and go from the lugs of the right angled section that's already soldered into the PCB. And then all I've got to do then is connect some wires to the new potentiometer. So I tinned the area first, all the areas that I wanted to solder, and then heated the wires and put them in place and just made sure I didn't have any dry joints. So before sealing the unit, you need to know whether your soldering has worked. And here are the results. I knew it would work in theory, but it was still nice and reassuring once I'd actually got the job done for the volume pot to be working. It was a mini miracle. What I did now was I left enough wire because I knew I had to close that PCB down because obviously that PCB has got to be right against the back of the unit in order for me to get that volume pot in place, the new volume pot. Now, I decided that I would get the hex nut screw the volume pot back in to the back of the unit and then try and get the PCB as close as I could whilst feeding the wires that I've left in the unit around so it didn't hinder the closing of the PCB. So you have to be very careful not to have that wire going anywhere near those LEDs that are sticking out of the PCB and also the toggle switch. I managed to sandwich it all back in place and then hold it down and then silicon rubber it back in so if you just sit the PCB downwards I put a piece of foam on top of it and then I put some weights and I just grabbed anything that was kind of heavy and then I put a couple of other items on top of it and then just sealed round 
the PCB. I have to say that for a cost of £1.50, this kind of repair, instead of, you can imagine, I'm beyond my warranty, so it comes with a three-year warranty, this unit, but that's pretty good. I thought this way would be the easiest just to keep the unit going and it means it doesn't have to go on the scrap heap and it's kind of green, isn't it? So overall then, my conclusion, they're a good unit, they're very handy at especially small gigs but they will work on any kind of size stage really. They work in loud environments, which is good, especially if you're playing with a drummer. And they're small, you can get them in the boot of a car. And people that I've played with have always complimented them and said, oh, these are good little units. In terms of the vulnerability, then yes, that volume pot is, and it will protrude out of the back. So yes, great unit, fairly easy repair, if you know what you're doing. And overall, I'm pleased it's back up working, so that's great. I hope this video has helped. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.